You see what I'm saying? We getting into this show, all right? I'm saving over. First day, we coming. No shit. No shit. What a shame this game yeah, is going yeah. to be when you go back and analyze. I can see the rage in your eyes. We'll turn our attention towards Dallas. You need to win this to establish what you're about for a season. You know we're a good team. But sometimes you have to know that that it's the work that gets the win. We gotta get over the hump, simple as that. The bottom line is we get graded. I'm in business. I don't have to win the Super Bowl in business every year. I can come in sixth and have a hell of a year. But in this business, you've got to come in first. You've got to come in first. And so fundamentally, you've asked for something that's a very narrow one to begin with. I want Jason to get it done. Big Jerry laying down the line. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Thank you so much for spending part of your holiday with us. Casual, Stephen A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. But let me explain. Like, like beyond, beyond casual. casual. Let me explain. The vest is fresh. I didn't get the memo. No doubt. Here's the deal. Okay. Well, you don't need the memo. Thank Here's you. Here's the deal. Okay. You got, got to understand what I'm. It's a plan to all this. Really? Okay, so I got the best. The best is pretty yeah. damn fine. Yeah. I know this. But here's the deal. Very I want to understand. The jeans are old and baggy. Why? You got your bows on from because back in the day because, because when you're eating, mm, you, you probably gonna spill something. Yeah, yeah you'll spill it. Yeah. Got it. That's why. Got hey, it. I, uh, uh, by the way, it's not like I'm going here to some place to change. I'm going straight to common. Somebody said, hold on, hold on. I'm straight to you. got the You got the Max, I like to talk about that gravy scene. No, 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 not at all, Max. Not at all. You're not going to spill it. You're going to have something to cover you. It's just going to fall in your teeth. Common. Common in the kitchen right now. She told me my lasagna will be ready by about 1230. Okay, and my turkey wings. How much is that tray do you eat? Are you about half the tray? Oh, well, the about, lasagna, the tray of the lasagna. I would say about half yeah. that between that and my turkey wings, because I love my turkey wings, my candy yams, the mac and cheese that you just walked <laughs> off again with. All of that stuff is set up, and the family knows. Don't touch the plate. There's a plate right inside the side, Mac. Who oh, oh, is the turkey wings? Your family's from the islands and everything. Your sister's name yeah, is Carmen, Carmen, and she makes lasagna. People the assume you're Italian. Lasagna, lasagna is added to yeah. the I turkeys see. and the stuff yeah. and the yam. Yeah. 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 It's on top of that. You understand? Hi, hey, no more for this. How are you doing? Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. No doubt. No doubt. Happy Thanksgiving to my family in New York, Detroit, Connecticut, everywhere. We're happy to be here. But we're going to hobby up with this show. We got food to go get. Okay. All right, the Cowboys have been in the news for all the wrong reasons. You just heard Jerry Jones. He's pointing that bullseye directly at Jason Garrett for his squad, not living up to their potential. They're 6-5, and five, but they have the chance to get back on track today when the high-flying 8-3 Bills head to town. This will be one of the toughest tests for Bills Mafia. They have the weakest schedule in the NFL. Mr. Smith, I am looking at you. Yeah. Is this a must-win for your Dallas Cowboys? Oh, hell yeah, it is. Absolutely, without question. Because let me tell you something right now. The Eagles have an incredibly easy schedule the rest of the way. The Giants, Miami, the Redskins, people like that. When you look at the Dallas Cowboys and the schedule that they've got coming up, and you look at the heat that's been brought to bear by Jason Garrett, you got to remember something right here. I don't use, I'm not going to say they disrespect him or they have no regard for Jason Garrett, but it's not like he's considered the second coming of Bill Parcells or anything like that. They know what he is, but he's also very, very likable. And so as a result, if you can win and you can win with a coach like that, your life is considered easier. Jerry Jones has put the gauntlet down. There are a lot of people, including Marcus Spitz, who was on the show yesterday, who believe wholeheartedly. First of all, I believe Jerry Jones should have fired Garrett this week going into Thanksgiving. But I understand that's his adopted son. He don't want to do such a thing. But I'm telling you right now, you got a whole bunch of people in cowboy world who believe firmly if Jason Garrett loses today's game, he will be fired. And so when you look at it from that perspective, you, all of that things, all of that stuff coming together, you got to win this game. Now, the Buffalo Bills, this is number three ranked defense in the National Football League. Their defense is filled with monsters. They can ball and they're coming. Now, 
Offensively, they're challenged because of their passing attack, because of the youth of Josh Allen. Even though you got Frank Gore running the football, and we all respect the hell out of him and believe him to be a future Hall of Famer. But he's only averaging about 3.9 yards a catch. I should say only. It's respectable, even though there are guys that are doing better. But they got a decent running attack, like top five in the NFL. You got to be able to pass the ball. You're gonna, we're going to see what you're going to do against the Dallas Cowboys. But make no mistake, because of how uh, compromised Buffalo is perceived as being offensively, along with the expectations that Jimmy Johnson has for this team, with everything that he has said, it is clear this is a must-win situation for the Dallas Cowboys, unless you want Jason Garrett fired. If you want him to stay, this would qualify well, as a must-win. I mean, that's the point. For you, this should be a must-lose. Right? If you want Garrett gone, then this is a must-lose I mean, game. Yeah, who said I wanted him going? <laughs> well, I mean, if you think it would be good I for mean, the Cowboys. Be, I mean, I, let's not get it This is getting complicated. Up. If you think it would be good for the Cowboys to get rid of Jason Garrett, then it's a must-lose game. Why give him false hope? Because I'm under no illusion. Uh, I'm not deluded like Cowboys fans are thinking they're going to win the Super Bowl with Jason Garrett as a coach. But really, I think that's the only thing holding them back. This is not a must-win game. This is what I said about the Eagles the other day. It's not must-win. I looked at the Eagles' schedule. It was soft headed And what did we both agree on back then? It's going to come back to that Eagle, down to that Eagles-Cowboys game. That's going to be the must-win game for both teams. Because the Eagles, even though they have a very soft schedule, could easily be upset along the way. Mm -hmm. And the Cowboys, even though they have a, a tougher schedule, it's not like you look at the Rams this year and you go, oh, my God, that's an unwinnable game. They have games they can win including when they end up at Washington at the end of the season. This is not a must-win game for the Cowboys. It's a, you know, if you think that to keep false hope alive that they can somehow make a playoff run type win for the Cowboys, they're a game up on the Eagles. They will play each other. The Cowboys are fundamentally mm. a better team than the Eagles. Look at their point differential. Cowboys have one of the best point differentials in the NFC, and I know yes. that partly has to do with their schedule. Yes, it's, a, it's a must get going for Ezekiel Elliott. I know that much. He's averaging 59 rush yards over the last three games if they plan to do anything. I think they hit this is a must win game for the Cowboys. And I know the schedule favors the Philadelphia Eagles down the stretch, but when I think of the Dallas Cowboys, they're 0-4 against winning teams. Mm -hmm. You come out here and you lose a game at home on national television to the Buffalo Bills, who nobody's slighting the Bills. The Bills are 8-3. They're a good football team. Do you know what that does to your psyche as a football team? Because they hear all these guys, they hear all the chatter. As much as guys talk about, well, we're trying to tune out the noise and all that, they hear everything. Guys in like people in, in, in these organizations, they hear everything we're saying. You go out on national television, lose to the Bills, go 0-5 as far as winning teams are concerned, boy, you talking about the heat is, is I mean, it's really turned up for the Dallas Cowboys. They need to win this game. I mean, this is a winnable game for the Dallas Cowboys at home against a Bills team. Although they're 8-3, Dallas should win this game, in my opinion. Well, listen, if you look at what Molly said and talked about Ezekiel Elliott, you're talking about a guy that's still averaging over four yards to carry on the season. The last three games, he had 139 yards rushing against the Giants. Then against Minnesota, he's had 47 yards rushing, then 45 yards against Detroit until he went up to 86 yards against New England, averaging better than four yards a carry. I can make a legitimate argument that the Dallas Cowboys, with the number one passing attack in the NFL, by the way, statistically, when you look at them, why are you not getting Ezekiel Elliott the ball? I thought last week against New England it was inexcusable because – not only was he running the ball effectively, but the inclement weather mandated that you run the football more than you throw it. And then when you cut, take that and you couple that with Stephon Gilmore, put in Amari Cooper under lock and key, right? So your number one receiving option, you only targeted him twice. You should have targeted him more. But if you're not going to target him more, let the excuse be because we were running it down their throats using Ezekiel Elliott, the $90 million man to do it. Especially on a short week, to, to not defense give, is going to be tired. To not give Ezekiel Elliott the ball while not targeting Amari Cooper, that might be the biggest reason that Jerry Jones is going off. Wait a minute. I paid this man. I paid my offensive lineman. I'm in the process of getting ready to pay Amari Cooper or at least discover how much he's worth in games like this. And you don't do any of the three. Inexcusable. Inexcusable. It's a big game for Dak, too. It's, you know, national game, high profile, um, short week, should favor the Cowboys. They're used to playing on Thanksgiving. The defense is usually worse off. 
Um, Josh Allen is has done his thing, but not exactly setting the world on mm-hmm. fire. Big game for Dak, for sure. Yeah, it do a lot for their momentum and obviously everything going on with Jason Garrett. But to your earlier point, they're still in it. Bad division, NFC East, all they need to do is win it, and they're in the playoffs. But, but I think the, the best team of the it, division. Because of your point, Molly, in terms of them still being in it, yeah. I think that's where the level of urgency for Jerry Jones is so appropriate. You're not complaining while you're out of it. You're complaining no. while yeah, you're yeah, in yeah. it in first place Jerry and Jones in a position. Yeah, I mean, you should, I mean if you're the Dallas Cowboys, you should, you should be trying to separate yourself because the Philadelphia Eagles – playing bad football. Mm-hmm. You have an opportunity the Dallas Cowboys, you go out here, win these games, yeah. start stringing some things together, you can separate. It, it won't this even have to come thing. down to the last and game this against the Philadelphia Eagles. Buffalo team would be their first win against a winning record. Uh, we're cooking up a ton more debate here on First Take on this Thanksgiving Thursday. What happened last night in Beantown that Stephen A. says is the best thing that could have happened? 